Today, we conclude the Marylevania State Only Challenge. And is it going to be in victorious fashion or is it not? Well, this game is literally everything for us. Final episode, it's go big or go home. And in that same step, we have a chance at a breakout running back here with Bryce Stallings as Saquon Barkley is out with injury. If he could help lead the team, one, we might be the first ever Madden 24 state only challenge to win. If he does not help us and we cannot move the ball, he'll be another one in the loss column. Good news, we do have our starting quarterback back in the starting lineup. Kenny Pickett back from injury. Charles Halen did quite literally just enough to see us through the AFC Conference Championship. The offensive line fully back healthy. But for our opponent today, they cannot quite say the same. Some of their key players are still on IR. Kendall Fuller is going to be out. They're missing Xavier McKinney, probably a backup tight end in Billups as well as a potential starting guard for him in Radunes. So that all good news for us. So with the final game set up here for us in the Marylevania State Only Challenge, how does it come to an end? The finale begins. Defense out first as it's an empty set here for Herbert and the Falcons offense. And it's a strike downfield, a big gain, 25 yards, play one. Herbert finds Reed, getting him up to the 50 as they change up the look from there going under center with a tight set. Some play action, rolling it out quickly, turning up and picking up nine as he finds his tight end in Hunter Henry. Our defense has kept us in many of games. We need them to make some big plays. Some turnovers have become a custom for us as it's down the middle, stuffed Jacobs, leaving third and inches. Brandon Smith has developed very well throughout this series. Look for him to make some big plays as well. As they go back to Jacobs, great blocking, much more than the inches they needed. Whitehead gets the tackle. Jacobs has him first and 10 at the 29. Defense wins championships. It's a saying that's been said for a very long time. We're going to need this group to step up, and so far the first handful of plays have not been great. Falcons finding themselves with a lot of open space, and it's been both through the air and on the ground. But as the field narrows here, can we look to make a play? Well, Herbert runs straight into Nick Cross. We'll get the tackle gain of two as Herbert a little bit slow to get up, but he will manage it. Bringing up second and eight at the nine. It's a tight shotgun look here. Two spread either side as Herbert looks to throw across the middle and the first touchdown of the Super Bowl goes to Terry McLaurin. Every single play pretty much left wide open. So as our offense heads out for their first possession, we need to answer. Kenny Pickett under center. Stallings alone back. As we send Parker Washington in motion, he takes the jet sweep, turns it into a jet dive. Gonna pick up about a gain of 13. A little bit of a surprise first call there for us as I assume we're going to have a lot of rushing with Stallings today. We'll see if the OC agrees. Sometimes we haven't been on the same page. Stallings breaks one, breaks two, then gets stacked up, gain of nine. And one thing we haven't had to worry about with Stallings is the fact that he breaks tackles. Pretty much the first one is a gimme most times. First pass goes to Brenton Strange, picks up a gain of five. He was the first of any really of the players of this challenge to really stand out his rookie year. We of course that added a Conquo. They've been a great duo. Pickett looks to scramble. He will pick up five again. Similar to the last play to Strange. Though this one not a first down. Brings up second and five. We go back down the middle. Stallings pushing forward. Stumbling down with a gain of about eight. 
Obviously, our plays haven't been as flashy as the Falcons offense, but honestly, just as effective so far. Israel checks in at running back. He takes a handoff down the gut. Open space gain of 15 before he meets the first defender. And just as the Falcons drove, we've drove as well into the red zone for the first time today. And Pickett doesn't like the look. He's going to flip it. So the tight ends down to the bottom looking to throw. He's got some time. Going up top, touchdown, Chigakonkwo. He's come through for this team so many times. Traded for him for a rival, and he's been a fantastic addition. So far, no defense has shown up today. 7-7 with about a minute and a half left in the first quarter. Who's going to make the first big play? Not on offense. Well, there we go, right down the gut. Holbert, as well as I believe it was Gross Matos. Love to see that combination hitting home. Of course, those two have had to trade off playing time this year due to a little bit of some injury for Gross Matos. Herbert swatted down. Tried to find, I think it was his tight end on a wheel. Instead, he'll find his team with a third and 18. Chance to get off the field here as they're back at the 17. Herbert looking to throw a little bit of pass rush. Gross Matos back again. One and a half sacks. Sold this one for him. And that gives our offense prime opportunity to go ahead here. As we start at the 43 following the force punt. It will be back down the middle. Stallings a little hezzy. Goes towards the top. Picks up seven. Three rushes for him, 24 yards. Offensive line opening up those gaps. It's a strong group. The power game is there. As we let the first quarter come to an end, decide not to snap that ball 7-7. Offensively, it's been a lot of big plays. Defense finally made some plays for us. We're hoping the Falcons don't follow suit. Second and three as we start the second quarter, just shy of the 50. It's Israel with the handoff. Well, again, bunch of space down the middle. The linebackers have not been there for a majority of this game. And if that's something we can continue to attack, then I sure hope we do. First and 10 inside the 40. Go a little bit of some play action. Kenny Pickett going deep, and it gets picked off. Intended for Jahan Dotson. It was 1v1, but Stewart makes the play. I was perfectly happy with seeing that shot opportunity. We need a couple of those to empty out the box, but unfortunately comes up a little bit short. Herbert now with a chance to get his team the lead again. He rolls, throws, finds his target. That's the tight end Hunter Henry with a nice gain up to the 45. Only one incomplete pass for Herbert was that last one on the previous drive where he got swatted down. Looking for Hunter Henry. With a first and 10, they go back to the passing game. Quick stop and caught despite the hit there from Joey Porter. Reed ends up holding on, gain of seven. Bringing him up a second and three with two down at the bottom, one up top. Hard count, no one moves. A little bit of some play action. They pick up the blitzing linebacker and this time Joey Porter jars it free. He's been fantastic for us leading that DB group. Need him to have a heck of a game. With a third and three, a chance to maybe force a punt here. We bring the blitz and it pops out late. No, I definitely saw it hit the turf. Coming in here to get the grab. He takes a couple hits. The ball does pop out. I'm assuming ref is saying that it was a catch. He was down and it wasn't a fumble. At least that's the only thing that would make sense to me but it's a first and 10 here for the falcons with a full house pistol set they hand it off jacobs going nowhere sir dennis getting the stop and i always call him sir dennis because honestly i'm not quite sure how that first name is pronounced but i like sir dennis as we're back again one and a half sacks for tolbert same for gross matos they combined for that half sack earlier and once again we pin them in a third and long. Third and 15, double A gap look for us. They got trips up top. Herbert, clean pocket, finds his target off to the races, and they answer on third and long. Dean Woodward takes it to the house. And in the Super Bowl, that's the kind of play you need from your quarterback. And our quarterback answer back from his previous interception, looking for that deep shot. Similar there to Herbert. As we check down on the throw, Stallings 
Couple tacklers come in, bring him down gate of six, leaving second and four. At the 31, we go back down the middle. He spins off one and will pick up that first down. As mentioned earlier, he is good for breaking at least one tackle a rush. 99 break tackle, and it's been that way since we drafted him. Although, of course, he hasn't quite had the full starting spot here at running back. He's filled in in a few games for injured Saquon Barkley when we're asking him to do that here. Second and nine following just the gain of one. Looking for a trap block down the middle. We get it on Aline McNeil. Stallings cuts up top and he will pick up about four. And that leaves us still needing five on third. Just by the 40. A bunch up top. Dotson down to the bottom and it looks like O'Neal jumps early. We're actually going to call that on Chig. It looks like we actually had a couple different guys move early. So third and ten. It's an empty set here for Pickett. Cross the middle and swat it away. Intended for Parker Washington. It's a stop by the Falcons defense with about two and a half minutes of their offense. And if we could just make sure that on a third and long, we don't give up a touchdown right down the seam, we should be good. Outside of that one play, defense has done very well from that first drive as they tried it again. Overthrown by Herbert, who's seven of 10. He's got two touchdown passes. He started off pretty well with that second and 10 they'll go with a handoff Jacobs hasn't been used much despite them having one of the best rushing games in the league of course with guys like Dennis getting those quick tackles they're going up against one of the best run defenses in the league as well as the two-minute warning hits Falcons still have three timeouts but a third and seven a big stop here is needed for our defense give our offense an opportunity as Herbert looks to throw, he rolls past Rush, forces the throw away. That time, I believe it was Cansey applying the pressure. We get the stop we need. And with just under a minute 50, we've got three timeouts, but we're starting back at the 23. Hard count for Pickett, no one moves. Of course, you can tell we're jumping out here with the squad. They help try to lead us down the field as Pickett takes some awkward contact. He waited as long as he could before deciding to slide down go hurry up they go single high safety a couple different options here as Pickett will roll to the right hand side looks like he's looking to scramble again gonna pick up the first down getting out of bounds late hit no flag guess the refs decided it wasn't too big of a hit to warrant that penalty two to either side as they go double a gap they don't bring out anyone extra look for Parker Washington who heard the footsteps he had the ball in his hands, but he let it go before the hit arrived. And credit the DB and Reed for jarring that one free. Bunch goes to the right-hand side here, second and 10. As we look for the drag, we find a Conquo who's just shy of the first. And that does allow us to bring out the heavy set here. Brandon Graham, the fullback, former guard to help lead the way. And that he will, spinning off of one. Stallings picks up the first. We'll call our first timeout there. We still have two more remaining, 44 seconds on the clock as we stick with the power set here. A little bit of some play action with a single high safety. Cross face, look for Dotson, but the corner drops back. Right place, right time, Watson. Well, I must say, like the attempt there from Pickett, we're still trying a couple of these deep throws, though keeping most of our play a little bit more short and intermediate. As we go with the slant, it's Dotson this time who gets the catch. Hurry up offense as we tick under 30 seconds, closer to 20 seconds. Israel, the running back, he'll take the handoff. We don't get the block on the linebacker, but we do pick up the first. 16 seconds. Just waiting for one of these plays to open up here for us. As it looks like an adjustment being made. Jarrett's route, maybe trying to get that a little bit deeper here. As the safety does drop, Pickett, he's going to step up, takes a hit. Call our last timeout with 10 seconds left. And with only 10 seconds left, this has to be a shot towards the end zone or throw it away. Can't miss out an opportunity to get some amount of points as it's thrown out late for Parker Washington. We will tie it up. With five seconds left in the half, make it 14-14. Great two-minute drive from the offense.
That will be enough to carry us to halftime. And it's been a really fun Super Bowl so far. Game tied up 14-14. And for the most part, it's been a battle of opposite offenses. We've done most of our work via the ground. Meanwhile, the Falcons have aired out the ball, both teams finding success. And as mentioned earlier, it's the defense that wins championships. So we'll see which defense makes the bigger plays this half as it's our offense to get things started a great opportunity with that touchdown right before halftime to try to grow a lead here as we start tied up first down doesn't go anywhere second and 10 we go back to the run stallings down the middle not quite able to spin away it's just a gain of one falcons teen up on the run game to start here so third and nine we go spread empty two down the bottom bunch up top Kenny Pickett had a 50-50 first half. We'll say and that one nearly picked off. Tried to find Stallings at a dive out for it. Both come up empty. And so does our first offensive possession of the half. Falcons take over at the 26. It was mostly Herbert. Not much of Jacobs at all in that first half. Terry McLaurin did get one of their two touchdowns. Gets the catch here, gain of eight. Of course, he's going to be matched up with either Joey Porter or Benford. Both have played really good football for us. Second and two. They still don't go to Jacobs. Looking to continually pass the ball. Finding open space. That time, Benford got caught on the deep stop of the two different guys. Probably would prefer that we have Joey Porter on McLaurin. Might need to make that adjustment throughout. Hunter Henry had a good first half. Picking up the first down on the quick check down. Of course, the Falcons offense being helped by a very high percentage of completed passes here for Herbert. 10 of 14, most of which the incompletions just have been two knockaways. <laughs> also, a few that have just gone a little bit awry. But for the most part today, Herbert has been just spot on. Credit there to Whitehead on the knockaway. Brings up second and 10 as they continue their air raid offense. Coming back for it, Benford not able to jar it free. McLaurin, solid hands, gets them a first down, down to the 25. They have not given the ball to Jacobs yet this half. Will they here on first? They got a tight set, still looking to air it out. They do not trust the run game. But why, when the passing game has worked out pretty well, Herbert just off on the pass to the sidelines. Brings up second and 10, one of the few no-gain plays we've had this half for the Falcons. As they do go Jacobs on second, given slowing down, but it's going to be Brandon Smith who eventually brings him down. Gain of one. Only six carries for the superstar running back as it brings up a third and nine. It looks like three receivers down to the bottom, one up top. Herbert in the pocket, going downfield to a wide open 88 as Mitch Tolbert shaken up on the play. He'll head to the trainer's table to get that leg checked out. But it does leave the Falcons with a first and goal at the one. Jacobs down the middle, dives, barely crosses that plane. Brandon Smith not able to meet him in time. Falcons retake the lead. And the trend will seemingly continue of our offense trying to answer back in this game. Have yet to, I believe, take a lead. Stallings down the middle. Just again, a gain of one. He had all the space in the first half. Hasn't found much so far this half. Offense might need to make some adjustments as it appears the Falcons defense has. Two receivers spread either side. Kenny Pickett rolls into the pass rush. Matthews gets the sack, make it third and long. And hopefully we could find that similar play that the Falcons did down the seam. As we go back to the two spread look, Kenny Pickett, he's rolling again. Ali McNeil providing the pressure. But it will be instead a sack for 96, Allen. About a loss of one, but it's going to force another punt away. That was a pretty good field position. Falcons take over, now a chance to grow a lead, widen it past just a one-score game. With about two minutes left here in the third, they hand it off Jacob. Six carries today, this is his seventh, as he picked up seven points the last go-around. And I'd imagine... The closer we get to the fourth quarter, given to some fresh legs there, and Josh Jacobs could help them start to control some clock as they would go across the middle. It's a catch for Reed, gain of nine. 
So let's make some changes here to our defense. Porter going to be matched up on McLaurin as often as we can. And we're going to start to bring it down the corners. Works out well there on the flat, leaving it third and inches. Hunter Henry not able to get the first, but an empty set as they go bunched on the bottom two up top. But just needing inches, you'd imagine they would run, but I guess you don't need it when you have all that off coverage. And Kevin Givens shaken up. Second D lineman to get injured here for us, though he's going to head to the tunnel. That'll definitely shake up some of our interior. Can't see already playing there. Looks like Pleasant coming in here first and 10. He's made some plays and some opportunities, though. It's Hunter Henry breaking through the bunch. Finally bring him down at the 14. Defense has got to find a way to at least force a field goal here. A turnover would be fantastic as Herbert flips the play here. The tight ends go down to the bottom. They have two superstar tight ends. No wonder they make it here to the Super Bowl as they go to that second who makes it second and one. And that'll be enough to send us into the fourth. Currently down one touchdown, though the Falcons knocking on the door. And our defense bail us out. It's going to be a heavy set here for the Falcons. Three tight ends down to the bottom. Jacob's the lone back, though. Play action. We get pressure, and it's tipped up. Brandon Smith credited with the breakup, but not going to get the interception that we were pretty desperate for there. Third and one. Two receivers down the bottom, one up top. As Herbert making a check, still not running. We bring the blitz as it's tipped away. We'll end up forcing that field goal attempt a little too close there. As this one kicked from about the 12, 22 yarder down the middle. With the challenge on the lines here, we are stepping out, taking control of the offense. As clearly our game plan has not worked this second half. Looking for the deep dig, we find Rakeem Jarrett. Gonna be a nice first down for us, getting us up close to midfield. Hard count from Kenny Pickett. Might need to run a little bit of some hurry up. It will depend on if we continue to get these big plays. Let the slants well develop. Washington finds another. He got a touchdown earlier in this game, the one right before half. Hurry up offense to follow as we look for downs. He does not bring it in. Jarred away by Carter. Though, do have to say, really nice throw there from Kenny Pickett. We've... Put a lot of pressure on him. We've talked a lot of smack about his play as well. So when he plays well, we'll give him some credit. He finds downs that time. Good placement again, finding the soft spot in between the linebacker and safety. We're going to switch things up here. Conco goes to the right, Washington to the left. Stallings takes the handoff, looks to bounce. Is going to break the tackle, but that's actually going to, I think, no, they do give us forward progress. Thank you, referee. I'll end up going as a gain of three rather than what might have been a loss of three if they didn't. Looking for some play action. Ran this play earlier. No success. We'll look for the big man who has stone hands. I just had to give him the opportunity. It looked good. Third and seven. Look for a little bit of some play action. As we got our guy coming across this time, Jarrett holds on and we have drawn this game back. Still down a field goal. Now we need a quick stop here from our defense. Uh, with 5.42 on the clock, we have some time though. Josh Jacobs, I imagine they go his way a little bit more or not. They're just gonna keep giving it to Herbert. I guess if it's not broke, don't fix it. Reed finds a bunch of space, soft coverage. Honestly, it kind of looked like we've ran a lot of zone today rather than the man that the team is primarily built upon. Interesting play calling from our DC as they go with a quick throw. McLaurin gets picked up, slammed down. It's a gain of four. Have yet to see any of our defenders really get a hold of some opportunities. Sir Dennis, haven't seen much from him today. And now could be a prime opportunity to see something happen. We still have not gotten back Givens as they find McLaurin again. As I was saying, Givens and Tolbert have yet to come back into this game. So we're dealing with some injuries. We could use some pass rush as Herbert misses the throw up top. The press coverage throwing that one off with Savage. He's made a couple plays here and there. Hasn't started very many games, but he's been a rotation kind of guy for us. Second and 10. Herbert. Up top, and if Pinnock kept his head on a swivel there, that was thrown right to him. 
That double move, though, actually cost the receiver a chance at the ball. Third and ten. Probably field goal range for him. Herbert has time. Downfield wide open. Hunter Henry. Down to the two. Well, this would be a great time, a prime opportunity to force a turnover, though goal line versus goal line. Giving Jacobs another opportunity. Early movement looked like tight end two moves. With that, they go empty to follow. An opportunity then to force an interception here could be huge. First and goal now at the seven. Herbert immediately goes to run, and Brandon Smith comes down to get the quick tackle, plus another couple Ravens. Bringing up second and goal at the five. We could handle a field goal. Still leaves it a touchdown game plus the extra point to win. But obviously we need to get the stops here. Second and goal. They go Jacobs. Down the middle. Down back to the one. His ninth carry gets him down to the one. Does his tenth carry give him a ten point lead? No, they go full back dive and we stuff it. Brandon Smith back again. And as we come out of the two-minute warning, the offense stays out. They're looking for a dagger here. A prime opportunity for us to really get us back in it as it's a sack. Gross Matos. Two and a half. We take over at the eight. Just under two minutes left. A huge play. Arguably a fumble, though they blew the whistle, so it was dead either way. Arm going forward but held on to until it was knocked away later you could argue for a fumble there but it's kind of come down to Kenny Pickett and the offense to make some plays starting inside our own 10 we'll jump out after this play Kenny Pickett looking to throw deep downfield he finds a conquo but he cannot hold on to it huge pass breakup there for the cornerback and I think the safety in there as well We'll look to go with the halfback screen here as we get a couple blockers out in front, though we don't get one of them that we needed, and Stallings goes out of bounds, leaving a third and four. Now at this point, first down is the most important thing. Four down territory as the season on the line, though. Got a couple drags. See if we could get someone open rather quickly. A Conquo this time, he holds on to it. Gonna pick up that first down. We have all of our timeouts. Gonna save them here. Go with a little bit of some hurry up. Play action, gonna flood the left side of the field. They do send a couple extra guys that way, so let's slide protection as well. Though they don't end up bringing on anyone. It's a rollout pass, looking for Parker Washington. Big catch this time as Michael Matthews shaken up on the play. He'll head to the tunnel for the Falcons and a nice little breather for our offense. Minute 18 left. Hard count from Pickett, no one moves. Trying to survey the defense. Got to get rid of it. Pass rush coming in. Let's play smart here. And that might include having a little bit of some runs mixed in here. Falcons have done pretty well so far, but expecting the pass. It's Stallings down the gut. Running through two defenders to pick up that first down. Down to the 36. We are in field goal range here for Chad Ryland. That means we got to at least send things to overtime. But obviously... We want the touchdown. Win this thing in regulation. Parker Washington to the outside. Gets the catch. Diving in. We take the lead. 35 seconds left in the final season of the Marylevania State only challenge. Kenny Pickett's fourth touchdown. Second of the day for Parker Washington. And with Chad Ryland's PAT, it is a touchdown down game the Falcons have three timeouts as Herbert looks to throw picked up slam down there Sir Dennis their first timeout call they need a touchdown here as it's 28 24 we get a hit right at the point of the throw he finds a read but we get the tackle in bounds one timeout remains 25 seconds as it's quick pass rush it's a sack from Kansi Final timeout, fourth and game. Marylevania can end it here. As Herbert looks to throw, he's got time. He loads up deep downfield. Porter knocks it away, but a flag comes in, I swear. And it is 
defensive pass interference and a one-on-one -on -one jump ball. You cannot call that. Falcons bailed out. 14 seconds left. Still no timeouts. It's lofted out of bound by Herbert. Second and 10, 10 seconds away from victory. This is touchdown range though from Herbert, but it gets picked off by Savage. He's looking to tack on some more, not gonna outrun Herbert. But for the first time in Madden 24, a state only challenge is complete. And the most fitting fashion that we've had in this series, defense has gotten so many late game interceptions. Well, that one, the biggest of them all for the one year edition to put us over the edge. Offense didn't even do much running in the second half as it was built. It was Kenny Pickett back from injury. Four touchdown passes, two going to Parker Washington, one of which was the winner. The Lombardi Trophy heading back to Baltimore for the Marylevania State Only Challenge. Israel up there celebrating Kenny Pickett to lift the trophy. You've got Brenton Strange up there next to him, very fitting. The biggest guy from the start of this challenge, but so many key attributes. I love Brandon Graham up there, that big fullback to help win so many blocks for us get the running backs going Rakeem Jarrett picked up a touchdown all in all it was a fantastic game and I think player of the game either goes to Kenny Pickett or Parker Washington what a fantastic end to a even better state only challenge one that saw so many key players so let's go over the final stats of the season now Kenny Pickett missed some time he didn't have a dominant year whatsoever, but he played a fantastic game in the Super Bowl. A couple mistakes, but he fixed those. So great job, Kenny Pickett. As for the running game, Saquon Barkley goes for 1,330 yards, eight touchdowns. Stallings also had eight touchdowns. We did not have a single fumble this season. Now, if you combine all the running back numbers, we are well over 2,000 rushing yards. So great job from that group. Saquon Barkley averaged just under seven yards per carry. Stallings just over five. Kenny Pickett just under five. Israel, not too bad. We even had Gilbert Smith who came in and did a decent job. And then, of course, that former guard turned fullback, Brandon Graham, two rushing touchdowns this season. As for the receiving gamer, Keem Jarrett, he stepped up in a big way. He finally got a chance to start. He'd been sitting on the bench for four straight years. He led us not only in receptions, led us in receiving yards as well as in receiving touchdowns. Chigakonko came through so many times. It wasn't as productive of a year for him. He did miss, I think, one or so games, had some injuries here and there. Jahan Dotson, Hate to talk ill, you know, of a player after just winning the Super Bowl, but he was a little bit of a letdown. Parker Washington, phenomenal end to his season. Really, this the passing game never got going much. Saquon Barkley had a receiving touchdown as well as Brenton Strange. Wish we got to see a little bit more of the tight end duo. Blocking wise, wasn't too bad. Connor McGovern, 11 sacks given up. Rasheed Walker, 8. But Scruggs, Mitchell O'Neal, solid down the middle. And then on defense, Brandon Smith, another player who had been kind of sitting on the bench, got his chance to start this year. He led us in tackles, though that's probably helped out by all the injuries that Sir Dennis had this year. But still, that tandem there, fantastic. As for tackles for a loss, Kevin Givens had 12. Owe had 10, who also had 10 sacks, led that group. Can't see six and a half, three for Givens. Gross Matos, a lot of injuries for him this year as well was his least productive, but still, he came up big in that Super Bowl. Tolbert also played pretty well. We had a lot of guys make plays in the backfield this year. And then, of course, that DB group led by Joey Porter. Three interceptions for him, two for Whitehead, handful for a few other players. And then another one of those players that was... Honestly, we tried to replace him several times. We just never quite had the guy, Chad Ryland ended up having a pretty good final season. But I think it is only fitting 
that we end this series by showing the banner. But before we do, make sure you go vote for the next state only challenge. I have that poll posted right now. Go over to the community tab and vote. The new state only challenge will begin on Thursday. Make sure you don't miss it. Hit that bear icon on the bottom right, scroll down or hit that sub button and definitely tap that bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. But as we finish off, let's pull up that banner. And as you can tell, Marylevania, the only team to complete the challenge, not only in Madden 24, but the only team to do it in year five, the final season. They improve over every single Madden 24 state only challenge prior in the Virginias, Central Plains, Southwest, Michigan, Central, Alabama, and Kentiana. Will we have any more join before the next installment, Madden 25, comes out? In a few months, we will see.